And that's that, my friends. We now find ourselves in this year's quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup as we beat Blackburn Rovers at home 2 0, with goals coming courtesy of Baddy Ashill, who scored on his long awaited debut for the new season, and the second coming from Raheem Sterling as we won a turnover in Blackburn's half, and Raheem Sterling showing that experience by opening his body up and curling his effort around the goalkeeper to win the game for us. And to be fair with you, my friends, after seeing the last up that Pochettino put out today after Pochettino stressed that the Carabao Cup is incredibly important for this season. I guess it only makes sense that all of us was expecting a win today. I'll be honest, I was a bit disappointed that we didn't see Petrovic start today. It would have been very interesting to see how he performs and it's the same thing for David Washington after getting minutes against Brentford to not get any against Blackburn tonight was a little bit of an L in my opinion but regardless my friends Pochettino wants to win the Carabao Cup this season and he believes that a full strength team is basically needed and to be fair with you the moment we started this game today you could tell the application of the players was there um I think this game in particular, we forced so many shots, especially from midfield, especially from outside the books. That was a detail that stood out to me. At times, I did feel like maybe the shooting selection was a bit poor. I felt like players were forcing shots more instead of like creating quality openings to really test the goalkeeper. So that was the only disappointment there. But regardless, the energy, the application, the intensity, from the moment we kicked off the first half, you could see what our game plan was about. Nico Jackson instantly makes a run in between the Blackburn defence and Enzo Fernandez plays a superb ball over the top and we saw this in like the first like 15 seconds of the game. So I think straight there, Blackburn knew exactly what type of game this was said to be and how they had to approach things and I did feel like, listen, they had one or two decent moments against us. You could argue that maybe Gallagher was a bit fortunate to not concede a penalty, even though it felt like the ball kind of like deflected into his hands. But outside of that, I don't really feel like Blackburn tested us as much. And the few moments they got came from one or two mistakes from us in the game. And to be fair with you, in a game like this, performance like that, I'm going to take that, my friends. But still... There was a lot of interesting things we saw in the game today. I think most importantly, uh, Nico Jackson. I feel like maybe I need to have like a separate discussion around him. I think the past like two to three games, I'm seeing this application from him. And I'm sure if you guys see the stats, you see that Nico is still pressing hard off the ball. He's showing the work rate. And listen, as Chelsea fans, we've seen so many strikers, uh, you know, play for us. Not necessarily, you know, get the goals that we want. But bare minimum, they put in that work and that effort. Uh, Werner, Torres, Barata, I can kind of go on with this. And I think Jackson's showing the same thing. But, you know, I do feel like we have to remember that this guy is still very young. He is 22 years old. He's played less than 100 games throughout his career so far. He's made a massive step up signing for us. And even though he isn't necessarily showing that killer goal threat at this point in time, when you're literally like signing someone like this to lead your line this season, you do that with realistic expectations, no? Because, you know, as seasons go on, I feel like Jackson could be that guy. Right now, naturally, he has a lot to work upon. But that doesn't take away from other good things we get from him. I think at times, maybe the passes he receives kind of means that he has to bring his teammates into the game. Now, Jackson can do that. You know, if he drifts out wide, we saw that skill against Blackburn where he took on his man and then played the pass back to Kukurea. He's comfortable across the, you know, like the lines, wide, centrally, and coming deeper. Maybe at times he has to come a bit too deep, but realistically, there's no Nkunku. There's no cons. There's no one to play off Nico Jackson. I think that was the most prevalent thing for me that I'm noticing in these recent games. I just don't really feel like Nico has that support guy close to him, players playing off of him, with him. And when I, I see games like this, I kind of see like this ocean of space where our midfield is and where Nico Jackson is about our attackers. And I think that it takes us so long to progress the ball in the opponent's half. Like for some reason, we need to have like all of our midfields on a flat line, helping us progress the ball forwards. And by doing that, sometimes I feel like it makes it harder for the attacking players to receive. And, you know, at times Nico Jackson isn't getting the service he wants. 
that doesn't take away from the fact that his finishing, uh, not his finishing, his movement isn't necessarily like, let's say, Harlan levels right now. But just because it isn't like comparable to some of the best movement in European football, let's not write this kid off at 22 years old because he still has that movement in behind. We were seeing that in this game. You know, as I said, start of this game, the Jackson run in behind straight away. He's showing that time and time again this season. He can do that. And yeah, listen, he missed a big chance. Um, a part of me even feels like maybe if we had better team chemistry, that pass should have found Conor Gallagher, who made that support run inside the books, right? And, you know, if this was like a team in better form, maybe Jackson dummies that and the ball goes in behind to Conor. But outside of that, Jackson had three block shots in the game today. And he tends to have quite a lot of block shots. And when I'm watching a game like this, it was kind of just like, it was then 4K for me to see, to be fair with you. And that's because he always receives dead balls. He's always receiving poor passes. Like the passes Jackson receives inside the box means that he has to take another touch just to create an opening for a shot. My thing is, why are teammates looking to play the ball towards him in areas like that unless they want the ball back to them unless it's like a one-two situation or something like that but i guess at the same time you know when you want to free up space for your strikers your teammates around you also have to be attacking the box at the right times you know when man city i mean harlan's scoring for man city for example you actually notice that it's not just harlan's movement exclusively by himself that leads to goal threat which leads to chance creation which leads to goals what does he have around him? He has teammates taking players out of the game. He has teammates creating the spaces for him inside the box. Hence why you'll find Harlan in the far post or the mid post, etc, etc. And, you know, in games like this, where we have the opportunity to play a cutback pass, you know, who, like you guys watching this right now, how many players can you count on your hands that are always getting in the right areas to attack any cross inside the box? Like, that can't be exclusively down to your striker alone. I think, you know, this type of conversation is getting a bit too, like, not dangerous, but I think we're forgetting the bigger picture here. And I think the narrative around Jackson is becoming like, oh, you know, if we just had a striker that was good, all our fortunes get turned around. Absolutely not. We are still a, a process in the making. We aren't like a Newcastle, and I get a bit jealous of Newcastle. I actually tweeted this afterwards because they're a team where, listen, on paper, I'm sure many of you guys would say, you know, our guy's better, our player's better, our player's better than theirs. But as a team, Newcastle are absolute levels. The chances they make for fun, how they create for each other, you know, the moments that they take advantage of, you know, the amount of variety of goals in which they score too. Uh, like for some reason, Newcastle kind of remind me of like, Premier League football like 10, 15 years ago. There's a there's a free-flowing nature to how they play, which I really like. And, you know, I kind of wish we had some of that inspiration in our team at times because we have the talent, we have the players, but I think sometimes, you know, this midfield doesn't necessarily support our attack enough. I'm not too sure. And I'm hoping that as time goes on, we can do better. And with massive games that are coming up against like, you know, Tottenham on Monday, Man C. These are games where hopefully we can play more counter-attacking football. And the times we have played more counter-attacking has always led to wins or positive results and performances so far this season. So let's hope that we get some fortune coming our way because the cynical side to me could say there's a possibility that this win tonight against Blackburn could be the only win of this whole month. I don't like saying that at all. But after what we've seen for like nearly 80 months, I feel like maybe this is what reality does now. You know, un un until I see more from the team, then unfortunately I'm going to be a little bit pessimistic, but not too pessimistic. You know, games like this today, it's always good to get a win. The performance was good. I felt like Enzo Fernandez played a, a very good game in midfield today. I think he was literally the brain of the team, the heartbeat. I think he got like six or seven key passes played as well too, which sums up the involvement. It sums up how he was the connector between, you know, the players in deeper positions, finding guys over the top. He really impressed me. He was combative. He was tenacious. And it was quality on the ball. And outside of that too, I think Cole Palmer again. I like Palmer tonight, but a few times, to be honest with you, and I'm going to hold Palmer to a good standard and a high standard because he's a good player. 
I felt like he was forcing shots a bit too much. Like, listen, he's showing nice body balance, dropping the shoulder. Yeah, the ball is literally glued to his feet. He was taking men on, getting inside the box to take shots for himself. But then in moments like that, for example, you're taking a shot with your right foot, not your left foot. And maybe the moment was there to play a pass with a teammate. There was another moment in the second half when Palmer took a shot from the left-hand side outside the books. Listen, I get it. He wants to like, you know, he wants to take shots. He wants to get more goals. And I think with how he's been playing, he deserves to. But there was a moment where he could have played a pass quickly in behind to find Nico Jackson. And listen, it's these little details that not only Cole Palmer is, you know, also creating, but every player, especially in attacking positions, they all kind of contribute to the mess sometimes, if you guys kind of understand what I'm saying. So I like Palmer today for the creativity. I like Palmer today for, you know, the nice bits of play and individual skill and ability. It was really nice to see. But I do think that this guy does have very nice finishing techers to his game. And I think he needs to learn how to create, like, you know, better openings for himself, which will come. I'm not expecting that to come overnight. But I've got high hopes around Cole Palmer based on how he's carrying himself and what he's doing in this team since he's signed for us, my friends. So, listen, this was a good performance today. Great to see Badia Shields who getting on the score sheet. Been a long time coming. Um, interesting that we didn't see him and Cole were playing together. I wonder if we ever see that. A part of me feels like we are going to see Badia on the left, Cole playing left back. It is, it is what it is, you know. We'll see if that brings more results. Hopefully it does for God's sake, but tonight this was a, a, a good performance because I think Pochettino encouraged these guys to react today. And I think they definitely did react. We saw players forcing shots. We saw players looking to play with tempo and, and, and intensity and speeds. And I think Pochettino got what he was uh, asking for today. And let's hope that we bring some of this momentum, even though it's like tiny, it's, it's fractional, into our game against you know, Spurs, because games against Spurs, they have their own dynamic and their own rules where lots lots of times form doesn't really matter in games like this. So my friends, hope you guys enjoy the win today. Share your thoughts and opinions, which players stood out for you. And don't forget to watch my news daily video because it seems like Florian Wirtz is the key player we're hoping to sign in 2024. So my friends, I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.